Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We have now joining us uh, Mr. Gide Johnson. He is a chief lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Johnson. Good morning to our viewers all over the world. All right. I'd like us to begin with the Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, really interesting headlines here. Uh, let's begin with this one. Buhari Oshimbajo for vaccination on Saturday. Exercise begins today. States get vaccine Monday. Agency six tight security at cold stores. Federal government and states yet to agree on 3.9 million doses sharing formula. FGI states for list of health workers, monarchs for COVID-19 vaccine. Manufacturing firms borrowed 507, 570 billion naira from banks in 2020. Oil stores above $67,000, Nigeria earns additional 318 billion naira per month. Five arrested with fake COVID-19 certificate in Lagos airport. Senate queries 55 vehicles allegedly missing from federal ministry. That's interesting. Lagos Chinese investors sign agreement on automobile assembly plant. Landmines planted to disrupt Oluba Ibadan uh, ascendancy order. That's according to CCII. Abdul Razak imposes curfew on Kwara communities over transporters' violence. And uh, Sheikh Gumi here is saying, if coup plotters are pardoned, why not bandits? And lastly here on the punch, gridlock persists as trucks return to Apapa ports. Mr. Johnson, really big stories here uh, on the front page of the Punch newspaper. Uh, where would you like to start? I think um, we should start with the vaccination of the president and that of the vice president. I think it's a step in the right direction. It's leadership by example. Now, if the president and the vice president can take the vaccination, those that have a um, negative perception or impression of the vaccination, we know that even at the top and at that level, the vaccination um, is taken and we communicate to everybody that the, vac the vaccines are okay, they are good, and then um, they are fine. And the negative impression as to vaccination or no vaccination um, would be erased. You, you recall the problem we have in the past in Nigeria with polio vaccination, during the eradication of polio vaccination. and um, the various mythology that was built around that vaccination. I think it's a step in the right direction. And the government needs to be commended with that. And the exercise is starting today. And the states, I'm sure the governors will flag off um, the vaccination across the 36 states in the third capital, um, I think. It's a welcome development. However, going to come out with a plan and a template that will ensure that every Nigerian at no cost have that shot on their hand. It is very, very important for okay. government to come up with, with a comprehensive plan that takes care of every Nigerian. However, um, they should start with the vulnerable. I think every site has the, the data of people that are 65 years and above, the most vulnerable segment of the population. I think they should come up with a template All right. concerning, concerning, concerning. Okay, Mr. Johnson. That's I, on that. And the other story. Mr. Johnson, I wanted to drag your attention you. to, to this story on the front page of the punch. It says gridlock persists as trucks return to Apapa Roads. I visited there on Wednesday and I was very shocked to see that there was no traffic. Uh, Basically, all the trucks, trailers had been removed. They had, you know, been designated the Lillipon truck park, so they were packed there. But to my surprise, people have been reporting that after that, you know, the trucks have been coming back to the, uh, you know, Apapa Road. I had spoken to the chairman of the committee on that Apapa traffic management, asking him the important question, will the Lagos state government sustain this initiative? And he made Nigerians a promise that they would indeed do so. So what do you think now about this headline with trucks reported to have returned 
to our papa roads. I ask my student this question. I said, what type of society do you think we are in? Talking about um, theory of the press, because the theory of the press tells you about the theory, the predominant theory of the press tells you about the predominant nature of any given society. So I asked them, I said, what type of society do you think we are in? Um, and we came to a conclusion that what we have is an authoritarian Society is an authoritarian press that operates within Nigeria where the press supports those in authority. And I said, you know what? We have substituted um Monakaika government with authoritarian democracy, not even authoritarian democracy. What we now have is oligarchy. What obtains in Russia, what obtains in China is now operating in the United States of America, and it's the same thing that is operating in Nigeria, which is a government of the few, selected few, untouchable few, and where you have oligarchy, you also have oligopoly, not monopoly, oligopoly. Now, monopoly is when states have control over economic resources. Oligopoly is when few private individuals have control over economic society. So if anybody is deceiving himself, that we are seeing democracy in Nigeria, or there is democracy in the United States of America, or there is democracy in Russia, or there is democracy in China. Whoever is saying that is just deceiving himself. We have seen a systematic erosion of the economic power of the mass, the, the political power of the mass, and being controlled by the few. Who are those that own tankers? That's the question. These guys are untouchable. You and I don't own tanker. We don't have the resources. Do you have the resources to own a tanker? I'm throwing it to you, and I'm throwing it to our viewers. These are the Lord and Master, untouchable. They, unto they can get away with crime. If you pack, yesterday, a student of ours as a journalist was coming to write an exam, and the husband dropped her in front of our school. You know what? These guys that call themselves tax force on one way or the other, summarily arrested this guy. The husband had gone point for dropping to for stopping to drop the wife in front of his school. You see the useless tax force they have in the state. They will harass private individual. Just make a mistake to try to drop somebody in Maryland. They will quickly jump on your car. And they find it so hard to enforce their rule when it comes to trailers parking on the road. So mm -hmm. who are those that own the trailer? They are untouchable. Right. All right. Also, where the governor was saying this, I was just like, Qu quickly so speak said, on um liberal government, government of not being able to do anything concerning that. All right. Quickly speak, before we move to uh, the nation, quickly speak on Sheikh Gumi's uh, statements there, saying that uh, if cool plotters are pardoned, uh, why not bandits? Uh, let, let's get your take on that quickly. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well, um, I don't know which cool plotters are pardoned. Because if you are caught for cool plotting and you are directly involved in summary execution, and it's only those that are indirectly complicit that are given life imprisonment and whatever. You. And if you are given a prison terms, sometimes you are pardoned. Now, if um, the man the man has come up with different ideas and different suppositions, and I think the DSS needs to invite him and ask him some questions for him to debate. If religious leaders that are meant to, pro to provide moral anchor for the society are the ones providing justification for criminality, then only God will help this country. All right. Uh, let's uh, move to the nation newspapers and see what we can find. There's um, other pretty interesting stories um, there. The big one on your screen, uh, which you're going to be seeing in a bit, says the governor, ACF, back order to shoot bandits with AK-47. Um, SAN's false presidential directive uh, and of course, uh, ARG saying a blanket order is open to abuse. Buhari Oshimbajo, governor set to take COVID-19 vaccine jabs. Also on the nation this morning, Oinlola resumes move to reconcile Makinde and Fayoshi. Um, what else can we find? Still on the nation, Lagos ride begins with 1,000 SUVs. Also an assembly plant is common. No, it was on the point this morning about a... Uh, a partnership with uh, Lagos and uh, Chinese investors, I believe, uh, for an assembly plant here in Lagos. 
Border towns join smugglers to attack our men, says Customs CG. Also, Akiri Dolu reappoints three commissioners as a Quara slams curfew um, in um, Offa and then lay after clash. All right, um, one more. I think it says here no cut off marks for Unilag admission. All right, not very relevant uh, stories. L let's quickly get you to speak on the shoot on site order um, on bandits with AK 47s. Um, what's your reaction to that, uh, Jude Johnson? Um, sometimes I think that um, our leaders need to be to be trained in the art of public speaking and to understand the climate and the society we live in. If we claim to be in a democracy mm -hmm. and we claim to be in modern society, we can't just give such order that people should be should. Um, you might be committing um, war against crime when you shoot someone that you will apprehend and prosecute. I think, I think what, gov what government should have done is to have ordered whoever is with them. We have various security agencies. The question we ask is how did this arm get into the hands of private individuals with enough security checks that we have? I think what the president should have directed these people is for them to do their jobs and whoever is caught with AK-47 should be summarily arrested and those that resist arrest. Um, that's line of engagement. If you engage security forces, um, that's a deadly encounter. And then in a deadly encounter, whatever happens. But giving such sweeping order, it's very, very dangerous and it's, it's antithetical to the democratic society and modern and modern society. I'm not justifying bandits. Whoever is involved in any criminality should be prosecuted using the machinery of um, the state and for us not to operate based on the law of the jungle. Because in the process, um, private individual will be caught in the crossfire. For example, let's just say that someone is holding a key for seven who should the market and you follow that order and then you try to shoot that person. What about um, in the line of the fire, friendly fire. So I think the direct the directive should be to the security agencies to do their jobs. How do how do arms enter into our country? And I've said it, if you want to understand this concept, all you need to do is to, to see media content. Just look at the Lord of the Arms. If you look at the Lord of the Arms, you know about the secret behind arms arms trading. Um, another story which you have is in Lola um, trying to reconcile Fauci and Mackinde. Uh, um, one thing I have told people that are very close to me discussing about this issue that what Fauci is doing, when he is a governor, he will not take it from anybody that's a former governor. And you should understand that fact that by the structure of our political party system, the governors are the most powerful set of people, whether in PDP or APC, the, for, the sitting governor, the sitting. Because you can see what is happening in Imo between the immediate past governor and the present governor. So it's the sitting governor that is the leader of the party. And PDP has just one governor, southwest. Automatically, that person becomes the leader of their party within the southwest, southwest zone. And I think um, the earlier that is understood, the the, the better. Well, it's the governors are caused the shot. Far she is the governor, and Mackinde is a former governor. Fauci will not take whatever he's doing to Mackinde now with respect to, to, right. to that. On the vaccine job, I think we have spoken. Yes, we have. Yes. Um, on Mr. the story Johnson. concerning yes. legal state partnering with um, the Chinese farm to start an assembly line, um, I think they shouldn't start the assembly line with the SUV. They should start with utility cars that an average Nigerian, the middle class, and the lower class can afford. And then when you start an assembly line of SUVs, um, it's for those that they will produce for civil servants and political class. And I've asked this question. If you are in public service and you are serving the public, why are you using luxury cars? Driving Jeep, driving Prado, it's a crime against humanity. No, for I, anyone I in they... public service, it's a crime. Those are luxury cars. If you say you want to serve the public, why should you drive luxury cars? Cars have different functions. You should drive functional cars. Functional 
economical cars and not luxury cars. Mr. Luxury Johnson, cars Mr. to clarify. Produce, luxury cars to maintain. Just to clarify, J.D. Johnson, the, the um, 1,000 SUVs. Um, are for um, a concept called Lagos Ride. It's a cab hailing service that um, has been launched by the Lagos State Government. Um, it's not, the, the assembly plant is different. 1,000 what? The SUVs are for, or, or rather, the Lagos Ride is a cab hailing service. It's just like an Uber or a Taxify um, that is. Oh, being launched in Lagos thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much for the clarification. Yeah. Okay. okay. Also, Mr. Johnson, I wanted to point out an, another perspective to you because, you know, lots of Nigerians are asking if the Lagos State Government intends to roll out a Lagos Ride taxi scheme like this, why don't they partner with, you know, local manufacturers like Innocent Motors? They're doing great things in Anambra State. You know, why, why don't we, why is the government not partnering with, you know, local brands why are they going all the way to china to seek partnerships i don't know what your thoughts are uh, on that regarding this uh, new lagos ride scheme you know off here i started on a lighter note off here um somebody will leave the mountain in okemesi in udi in plateau and will go to a mountain in arabia and they will go to a mountain in jerusalem and i will say that's where you can see god as if there are no gods in the mountain in Nigeria. It's the same thing. We always love to international things. If it is not foreign, it does not appeal to our taste. So it's, it's not peculiar to government alone. You have a local manufacturer. While we were growing up, Abba was in the 80s. In the 80s, Abba, in the 70s, Abba was competing with Taiwan. You know, he said, oh, this is Taiwan. He said, okay, that's second grade because he said, this is Japan. This is Japan. Then he said, oh, Taiwan. Okay, that's second grade. Now, if we have devoted resources to ABBA in the 80s, like we have devoted to foreign companies, where do you think ABBA will be now when it comes to, to manufacturing cars or manufacturing things? So I think we should, if you don't promote your local economy, you are not contributing to your own GDP. You, you, your GDP can grow, fantastic. But what happens to your GNP? What we should be looking at is gross national product. That's, but you know what they will use for the indices they will use for us is the GDP. The GDP is growing. The money Nigeria is making. No, we should use the GNP as a country. The money that nationals are making. That's what we should look at. So when we have a buyer and you have innocent motors in Anambra and you are going to China. Well, um, probably those ones give them a better deal than the deals. Okay. Yeah, but okay. what do we know? They know better than we do um, because they are the ones that are elected and they have the monopoly of knowledge when it comes to public administration. <laughs> All right, Mr. Johnson. Let's look at the Daily Independent. Insecurity. The Senate here is naming people who are the alleged sponsors of terrorism. And it says drug barons funding terrorists and bandits. And that's according to the Senate president. Reps raised the alarm over unspent 13 billion naira employment budget. The Comptroller General of Customs is saying customs lacks capacity to man borders. President Buhari is saying he will unite Nigeria by all means. And uh, we see this one, gunmen abduct 50 in Zamfara, burn houses, as well as other very gory stories here. Gunmen raid FCT houses, shoot pregnant women, abduct husband, others. Mr. Johnson, uh, let's focus a bit on security here, uh, looking at uh, the Senate president. He's saying that uh, the sponsors of terrorism here uh, drug barons, brands Nigeria, a, a major transit route. What's, what are your thoughts on this, really? If, we, if you feel we know the exact people who are behind this menace, what's stopping us from swooping in and arresting them? The number three man in the country is saying that he knew something and he has not passed the intelligence to the security agencies for them to do the needful then you begin to wonder what type of state or what type of nation we are in. Drug barons funding terrorists. And I've said it over time. You don't need rocket science to 
know about all of these things. All you just need to do is just to watch the movie Lord of Wars, and then you understand that the state and powerful individual within the state and sponsor of the political system, the financiers of the political systems are those that are behind um, arms trading and arms race and the growth of criminality, terrorism, war all over the world. In the United States of America, they call them the deep states. They call them the deep states. So uh, in Nigeria, you might can call them drug barons and the rest of it. But there are powerful people that have access to those that are in power. In actual sense, those that are in power couldn't come to power without their aid. So if he's telling us that, he doesn't need to tell us that. He's just um, to listen to the song in by Michael Jackson and look himself in the mirror. I'm looking at the man in the mirror. Every time he looks into the mirror, he will understand that we have given him a responsibility as the, as the Senate president to ensure that lives and property in Nigeria are protected to provide the needed checks and balances. For him to come out and raise up his hand, he's telling us he's helpless. And if he's helpless, he should just resign. Okay. Because there, he his level of there, There's also something, um, um, there's also a story on the uh, top of the Daily Independent uh, there. It says, gone men abduct 50 in Zamfara, burn houses. Um, and um, I always, you know, have mentioned, you know, that we, uh, Nigeria needs to have the same reaction to uh, kidnapping of its citizens as it does when they are school children. Um, 50 Nigerians being kidnapped should um, create, you know, um, a conversation across the country. Don't, do you agree with that, sir? I do. And this will tell you something on another story in Daily Independent. Where the I just want to link this story um, together, where the custom board said customs lacks the capacity to man Nigerian border. That custom lacks the capacity. Now, what's the rule of custom? Custom is to protect the economy, what comes in, goods and services that comes in and goes out of the country. And you know, and I asked a question earlier. Um, how do these guns get into our country? How do these people move into our country? Um, because we have heard that most of these terrorists and bandits are not Nigerians. They are from other countries. They are from Mali. They are from this. And I said, if they are from Mali, they are not doing that in Mali. If they are from Niger, they are not doing that in Niger. If they are from Senegal, they are not doing that in Senegal. And then if they cross over from Mali to Nigeria, how many countries do they pass through? to ensure that they get to Nigeria. What are our customs doing? Now, if the custom boss that happens to be a former military head of state and the justification for his appointment, which is an aberration in the first instance, was that the man is going to promote discipline and is going to ensure um, professionalism in the custom. If after five years, he's coming to raise up his hand, the way these people insult our intelligence is unfortunate. It's rather unfortunate that someone will just open his mouth and he will just say something that he will not be held accountable either by the state or by other institutions or agency of the state. It's so funny that he will just come and because I said we don't have the capacity. So it shows that you as the leader, you lack the capacity. And we have a situation whereby going to school has become difficult. Traveling on the road has become difficult. It is easier for security agencies and its, and its apparatus to harass innocent citizens, law-abiding citizens. I have said it. It is a criminal. It is criminal for you to be law-abiding in a criminalized society. Because in criminalized society, criminals go about doing their normal business. While those you that you are abiding by the law, you are the criminal. So that's the situation we have. How can you send your children to school when you reward criminality, when you give money to bandits? People are being kidnapped. Look. Let me tell you the reality. People have been kidnapped, even in Lagos. In Lagos, you remember that um, who was kidnapped, I think, in 2019 or 2020, that was kidnapped along a, a, a top military guy that was kidnapped. People have been kidnapped. You know what? People don't just come out to share the story. All they right. don't just come out to share the story. They suffer in silence about it. We, 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 we hear these stories, you, you and I know we hear these stories of people that are close or people that are not close, that oh, somebody has been kidnapped, 15 million ransom have been paid, and stuff like that, and government is paying lip service. 
All know, right. it's very difficult for you and I to just go anywhere. Before we go anywhere, we look at, we do our own security checks. All right, uh, Jay Johnson. We have security. And you are paying taxes. Wow. And it's, it's unfortunate. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. And of course, uh, we always love to hear your perspective on these issues. Uh, looking forward to another edition of, uh, of the press when you can speak with us again. Yes, thank you, Johnson. Thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure to be with you. And it's a Friday. Yes, Make sure is. you have the best of it. Just be safe. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. You too, thank sir. You, and that's bye. to all our all over the world. It's mm -hmm. Friday. Relax. Wind down. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Yes, Ooh, we will relax. The emphasis the really is on just relax, yeah. right? Um, all right, uh, we'll take a short break. And uh, when we come back, of course, we're going straight into uh, today in history and telling you things that happened today, the 5th of March, uh, way, way, way many back, um, years back then. We'll be back. <laughs>